meeting to order. Okay. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Does anybody want to call the meeting to order? It's 706. I'll call Someone volunteer. Someone volunteer. Raise your hand. hand. Pam. Raise your hand. Thank you, Pam. So um, who I have here, I'm just going to be taking notes and talking, so apologize if there's some like delay in anything. Um, we have Stephanie's here. Um, Kathy's here. Sarah from the library's here. Pam's here. We have Barbara R. here. We have Eileen here. We have Patrick here. We have Janice here. We have Maria here. <laughs> and we have Colleen here. Anybody else that I missed? No, we're good? Perfect. Eric. Eric says he's trying to get on. He's texting us, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. I don't, he's not so, in the waiting room, so I'm keeping my eye on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's working an overtime shift. Oh, okay. All right. So he just says he's trying, so. <clears throat> okay. If okay. He, tell me if he has a problem. Okay. Yeah. No one else had a problem getting on, right? No. No. <clears throat> All right, so um, thank you for calling the meeting to order, Pam. Um, and then we went over the members that are here and we'll see if Eric is able to get on and if anybody else decides to join us. Um, I was hoping that um, we could just get an approval of the minutes from the June 4th meeting. I know it seems so long ago. Um, and then we can start on with the business from there. I move the minutes of the June 4th meeting be accepted as printed. I second. second. Oh. Who was that? Janice. Was it Janice? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. I just want to say um, hi to everyone. I hope everyone had a nice summer. Everyone's healthy and safe and uh, doing well. Unfortunately, we're still on the virtual, um, in the virtual land right now, but who knows, maybe that'll get better sometime soon and we could all see each other in person. Um, I'm sure we all miss each other. I know I miss you guys, seeing you guys in person. Not the same, right? Um, with that being said, I just wanted to do a brief um, introduction so and give them the opportunity to uh, introduce themselves. But we have Sarah Briggs from the Weathersfield Public Library. Um, she is... Um, the new teen librarian, am I saying that correctly? Yep. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure I got the right title. And you've yep. been with us for about two or three months now? Yep, since June 15th. Okay, did you want to share anything with us? And um, we can also go around and introduce ourselves if you would like. Sure, I mean, I just, I want to say hi and thank you for including me. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Um, we're you know, still virtual programming. I was looking at the minutes and what Elizabeth shared um, last time, and we're still virtual programming. We're open for um, computer appointments, um, holds pickup, and we're going to be adding browsing as of next week, and then we will be adding evening hours the week after that. So gradually, we're getting there. But in terms of the teens and the programming, it's going to stay virtual. Wonderful. Thank you. Understood, though. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> do, we just go, do we want to just go around quickly and just say kind of our names and kind of who we are in the uh, Youth Advisory Board and in the community? I'll start. I'm Erica Texera. I'm the Assistant Director of Social Youth and Senior Services for the Town of Wethersfield. And um, I am the staff liaison for the Youth Advisory Board. Um, I don't know. Steph, did, Stephanie, did you want to go next? Um, I'm Stephanie Vernile. I, I don't know what my current standing is. I was the PTO president at Charles Wright, so that's kind of how I got involved. <laughs> now I'm in limbo. <laughs> We've moved on to the middle school, so. But it's, it's nice to meet you, Sarah. That's exciting. That's exciting, Stephanie. It is. It is. It's been an interesting Thank week. Thank you. 
I, that's for sure. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Barbara uh, R, do you want to go? Yes, my name is Barbara Rula. I'm a lawyer here in town and I do a lot of child welfare work. Um, I'm a mom and a grandmother and I looked at my CV recently and apparently I was on the youth advisory board in the 80s and I came back. I think I'm the longest serving member presently here. <laughs> I don't leave, um, I just start the day. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Eileen, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, Sarah. I'm Eileen Candles. I'm the mother of two girls that are in the high school now. I have a senior and a sophomore. They are both great readers. Um, and I have been in the staffing industry for a long time, but am currently unemployed and looking for my next home, hoping to land in higher education, in career services or career development, so I can continue and kind of like redeploy my skills um, pivoting into a role where I'm helping young adults move into the work world. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Patrick, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, Sarah. I'm Patrick Pellman. I'm the youth development manager to run the after school programs at the middle school when we're having them and a Friday night hangout at the community center and I also run the nature center. Thank you. Uh, Maria, do you want to go next? Sure. I'm Maria Alfonso. I'm a Wethersfield resident. Um, for many years, I've represented social workers at DCF. So I got to learn a lot and lots about things that impact children and young adults. Um, not in the best way, but uh, how they came to the system. But hopefully, they received the kinds of resources they needed there. I come from a long line of teachers. I'm not one, but I highly respect the effort and the work and the commitment to children um, because children are the future for all of us. And welcome. Thank you, Maria. Um, Pam, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, I'm Pam Harrison. I'm the school psychologist at Wethersfield High School, and I represent the Board of Ed uh, on the Youth Advisory Board. And I think I've been on like three or four years, give or take now. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Colleen, you want to go now? Um, hi, I'm Colleen Keene. I am a mother of three to have gone through Weathersfield uh, school system and I have a freshman at the high school. I also have a home daycare here in town that I've had for 17 years now. That's like shocking to me to even say. But um, I've been on the board for, I don't even know, probably five years now, maybe. I don't even know. More. But welcome. More. <laughs> it's more than that. So <laughs> the years <Yeah>. fly by. <laughs> welcome. Um, Dylan, I saw you got on. Do you want to give a little brief introduction for Sarah of who you are to the group? Yeah, uh, my name is Dylan Knapp and I'm a senior at Weathersfield High School. Dylan, is dad with you? On with you? Uh, no, he's working tonight. Oh, okay. So he must be yeah. trying to log in from work. Okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah. Right. If anyone hears that he can't get on, let me know. Um, Dylan's father is Officer Eric Knapp, who's a uh, resource officer at the high school um, and a police officer in town. Um, so he's, uh, I guess, working, but maybe he's able to get on while he's not busy at work, if that's even possible, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Um, Janice, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I'm Janice and Dara. I've lived in town for a little over 30 years. Um, I'm a retired school teacher. Um, and so I'd never really had time to get involved in my own town um, until I retired. This is one of the things that I've been interested in. So this is my, the beginning of my second year. So nice to meet you, Sarah. Thank you, nice to meet you. And then uh, Kathy, would you like to just give an update? Sure. Hi, Sarah. I'm Kathy Bagley. I'm the Director of Social Youth and Senior Services in town and also the Director of the Parks and Rec Department. So welcome to uh, town. 
Thank you. All right. So I think I got everyone. Let me know if I missed anybody. Um, jump right in. Um, just to go get uh, over some of the um, some of the details for our agenda, I'll go over the financial report. Right now, we have one thousand seven hundred and fifty nine dollars and sixty seven cents. A thousand dollars was processed uh, over the summer for the Yabbit scholarship that was awarded um, to. Samantha, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on the last name. Strong? Strong. Yeah, Samantha Strong. Um, and um, so that our, brings our total for right now. Um, I just want to say thank you. A bunch of members were able to come out earlier in the summer so we could present the check to uh, Samantha, and she was ecstatic. Um, her mom was very pleasant and was very um, happy. Um, she seems like a great girl and a young lady and it sounds like she's looking forward to college and she really appreciated um the, the scholarship which is wonderful um and uh that same day we actually were able the same group was able to take ourselves over to ryan brazi the past um chair of the of the board and graduating senior and give him a a gift uh just to say thank you for the years served on the board and for being our chair. So I just want to say thank you to all the members because he was very appreciative. His family was all there and they were very proud. So it was a very nice day. And we all social distance with masks on. I'm sure everyone saw, a lot of you saw pictures. Um, we did it really safe, um, but it was really sweet. And I was glad that we were able to do it. Um, does anybody have any questions on the financial report? We're good. Okay, um, Patrick, do you want to just give a quick update? I know it's a little crazy, but if you just want to give a quick update on um, kind of where we're at with youth services programming, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Unfortunately, we're not really able to do a lot of our regular programs because we're not being given access to school after school hours. So we are pretty much in a holding pattern until we get an approval. We think they're going to allow tutoring and the media center before they let the after school achievement program programs in, which are like the cooking and the baking and even the intramurals because there's a lot of shared equipment and a lot of activities. So it's tough to maintain social distancing. So those are all in a holding pattern. Now we thought about running the Friday night hangout, but Kathy and I kind of talked about it for about a half an hour and kind of came to the conclusion that probably not going to go right away. So we have it set up. We're just kind of in a holding pattern just in case we're able to run it later in the fall or early winter. And other than that, there's not much to going on with youth services right now. Do you have any update on the nature center just to, for children's program and youth programming there? We are going to do our preschool programs, the nature school in the morning because we can have 25 people in the building, but they're parent top classes. So it's gonna be one parent, one child to a maximum of 12 kids, so that's 24 people. That's a lot easier to maintain because the kids are smaller, you can social distance. We'll have enough supplies for everybody to be using their own. And they do go outside more often than not. So we're still gonna try to get those up. And then we've also are still trying to run our school vacation camps especially through the fall because the veteran is a veteran's day. And then the uh, election day, we don't tend to get overwhelmed with kids on those two holidays. 15 to 20 is a good number and we'll have two staff. So we, we well within safe ratios and that's pretty easy to social distance and ma maintain until each kid has their own equipment. If we start doing something different, we might have to cancel it, but hopefully schools will stay where they are or better and we'll be able to run the programs. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate it. Um, Kathy, did you want to give any like brief on, I don't want to put you on the spot, but a little park and rec, just kind of where you guys are at right at the moment for programming for you? Um, I think probably what I'd say is that some of the youth sport groups have started up and they're looking um, as we um, cautiously go through the fall so those are, are up right now in practice and conditioning for our youth, our youth sport leagues. Um, 
it seems like everybody wants to do the fall. So we have youth football. Um, Little League is doing something in the fall. Field hockey, youth field hockey, and youth soccer. So, um, so that's going on. We're going to be running some park and rec programs that we can meet all the uh, guidelines that are out there. We, we're going to do a youth gymnastics program. We, used to, we usually do it in the middle school, uh, but we're actually going to go to a private gym in Newington, and they're going to actually, um, they've staffed the program for us in the past, but this year we're going to actually uh, run it out of their facility because they have the better cleaning ability. They have, a, they have a facility that right now we can't get into, and they can also keep the classes small, which is what we also need to look at. So we're, we're kind of looking at each program and casual, not, but cautiously kind of building it in and watching, Pam, we're always watching how the school's going just to see what's going on and um, kind of mirror that. So we we're all want to make sure that we're keeping everybody healthy. And I'd be happy to answer any questions um, of the bro. It's going to be a digital brochure that'll be online that'll come out next Tuesday, the right after Labor Day, and people will be able to sign up either by mail in or online. So those are kind of the youth programs. We're going to do karate. There's a couple of things we're going to be able to do, and we're on hold with the swimming program till we find out what what access we might have to the high school pool and then what is it that we would be able to do and one of our priorities for us would be swim lessons and our swim team potentially but all of that it kind of a wait and see as we go through the fall kathy i'm sure i'll see it from more oh sorry no, go ahead. Oh, Kathy, um, I'm sure I'll see it somewhere else, but if you think of it, once the link gets set up for the virtual um, brochure, will you send it to me so I can post it on the Facebook page? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I usually see it through the Weathersfield Parks and Rec page, but sometimes I miss stuff, so I yeah, try to, like you know. Nope. They tell me that you always put our stuff up, which we appreciate. Yeah, no problem. It's just- um, Anybody else just, have any questions? Go ahead, Kathy. Oh, I was just gonna say, as everybody can appreciate, we're just in a unique situation too. We wanna offer things, but we also wanna make sure we're safe and we've got the right distancing. Thank you. Um, Pam, I was wondering, would you be able to give a quick, a quick update of how uh, school went first week, you and maybe Dylan, if you want yeah. to chime in? I would love for Dylan, uh, you know, Dylan, would you mind going first from a student's perspective, just kind of how your, you were in two days, right, with the alphabet? You were Tuesday, Wednesday? Yeah, I was Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, how was it from your perspective? It was just a little, like, weird to get into, like, like, only like half the kids being able to be there, but um, we were all like spaced out and everyone was following the rules with the mask. So um, it was nice. And the teachers didn't really have any problems with the online kids. So everything went fine for me. Dylan, that's great to hear. Um, you know, from the other side, of it, um, we are so pleasantly surprised with how great all the students have been. Um, it, it has exceeded our expectations, um, you know, across the board from masks in the hallways to following the new lunch procedures to being cooperative with one person in the bathroom. Um, you know, there's just so many new things and the kids are, are being awesome. You know, just across the board, just being absolutely awesome. So I'm curious, here. I'm um, those of you that have kids in elementary school, is how what's the what's the feel on how it's going there as well in middle school? Pam, I have two I'm, high schoolers, um, so I don't have the middle school thing. So I don't know if if someone else yeah. was about to answer that question, but. Um, 
I've got some mixed reviews, including okay. that it really depends upon the teachers. There's some teachers who are seeming to like encourage the Chromebook sign on to the Google Meets while you're in the class and while you're out of the class. And that's been kind of very difficult and challenging to be able to follow the teacher's lesson plans that are actually then still teaching on the board and like almost busier. It's in that particular class, it seems easier once remote, but it didn't seem to fit one of my daughter's preferences for when she's in the class. And most of her other teachers did made kids go sign on to the Google Meet if you were remote, but not sign on to it if you're in the room. So to me, it, it sounds like it's too confusing, but she's going to see what some of you know, her other friends experience. She found it easier to be on the Google Meet, of course, when she was remote today. Right. So, but not to be on it when you're there in the room. Yeah, I think everyone has been incredibly understanding and patient with all of our teachers and knowing that this is all brand new yeah. to them. Yeah. To do this simultaneously and figure out what works best for everybody. So. Right, right. And then hopefully for them to be open to feedback, like, you know, however it's going. But the other feedback I got was good. And then we were just on the first of the remote days today. So all good. I just heard lunches seem to be slightly awkward when they're in the gym and kind of feeling like they're, um, there's a lot of almost security guards watching them. So it feels like you're in prison eating lunch. Yeah. It's not great. Yeah. But the kids are and it is what it is, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Pam, I just have a question about Wednesdays. I've heard different, I mean, I have daycare kids that are in like elementary school. So do you know anything about what Wednesday is actually going to be across the board or don't they know? Um, we haven't really been given a definite answer. All we have been okay. told definitely is that no one is allowed in the building okay. and that we cannot, I don't know how to word this, we can't assign specific assignments for that day. Teachers are available to work with kids for extra help, but it can't be like an extra assignment day as of right now. Okay, that's what I thought too. Okay. So does that mean that that's what I thought for the high school? Yeah. So does that mean that they're at 80% teaching capacity of what you would be at in a normal school year? Or are they cramming into the other four days of the week what you would normally have spread across five? Well, I think generally speaking across the board that the message to our staff is that our social emotional um, needs are come first right now. And our staff have been told from the get-go that there will be no push to make sure that all of the curriculum is met across the board um, because what's more important right now is how everyone is feeling and making sure people are connected and making sure people are safe and feel as though that they are in a good place, you know, kind of where we've been since we've been distance learning since March. So I don't know how to answer that question. I think it's going to be subject specific. Um, but I think generally speaking across the board, the goal is to really be a slow start to the school year um, to make sure that kids feel, feel good kind of coming back to this model and teachers feel good coming back to this. I think most, I mean, I have friends that live all over the United States and most of them are using Wednesday for the same thing, Pam, that you're talking about, reconnecting with teachers, teachers reconnecting with certain kids that need help, but it's basically an extra day to get um, help if the kids need it or for the kids to catch up or whatever. So and, I don't think that we're any further behind right. than basically across the board from friends that I know that have kids in the high school and more middle school, most of my friends' kids are. So I think we're kind of universally on the same page. And on the staff end, that's also our department meetings, our staff meetings, our PPTs, our 504 meetings. Right. I'll be looking at this screen all day on Wednesdays. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yep. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Sarah, did you have anything you wanted to add on for add for programming or did you kind of cover everything when you guys gave your introduction for now? 
Um, I mean, I think that we do we do have a couple of programs coming up, but what they what I have the kids do is um, we make little supplies for the, you know they'll I make little bags of supplies for them to come and pick up, and then they bring the bags home, send them a video so they can follow along. Last month they made pop tarts. Um, this month we're gonna do magnets um, and doodle art, but it's all gonna be pretty much the same way. They can come in and pick up the supplies and um, then do the activity. Thank you. Um, I can just give a quick update on the JRB. Um, we stayed steady um, with uh, connecting with uh, open cases that we've had. So we've kept up with the case management and making referrals. Um, we're looking to um, probably see how the first couple weeks of school goes and then try to resume our JRB meeting. Um, we just have to see what that's going to look like if it if it's possible to do in person, which is probably not going to be the case right away, but um, we'll see how that goes and then try to see if we can definitely start doing them virtual um, if we can. And But we've stayed in contact with all the families and the youth that were on our caseload and have been consistently checking in on any resources that they, they might need. So that's where we are with that. Um, does anybody else have anything for youth service um, reports or information programs that they want to share? Erica, you might want to mention the back to school supplies. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Forgot about that. Last, what, two weeks ago, it was so long ago now. <laughs> um, we held our back to school supply drive on August 20th, and we did it as a drive up. Um, and we gave you a filled backpack depending on uh, the age of the student and the grade of the student. We had pre-filled them with specific stuff. Um, I think it went it went quite well. It was at the community center. It was it went quite smooth. It was um, set, the flow was steady. Um, we had great volunteers and great helpers, um, well staff volunteers, um, to help with that process. And I think we have. We're still giving out some supplies and backpacks as we speak, but I think we're about 200, close to 250 at this point of youth that were served by that program. So we were really excited about that. And we wanted to say thank you to everyone in the community who donated um, some of the supplies and monetary um, goods so that we could fill those backpacks up. Um, and then also our Weekend meal program um, continued in through the summer as our summer lunch program. Um, and we are able to still accommodate that through the summer and we will continue that through the school year. So we're still, um, that has never stopped given COVID happening. So we're really uh, glad that we're still able to get, um, get meals to youth in, in town. And the mayor's charity ball um, donated um, $7,500 to they did a virtual mayor's charity ball, and they raised uh, $7,500 for um, their food initiatives, which are the backpack weekend meal program, and um, the senior citizen healthy food program. Um, so they're going to continue to support that with the money raised. Um, there's actually another 500 that just got added on to that, um, 7,500 today. So we're, they're up to 8,000 that they donated for that stuff. So that's wonderful. Erica, how does that compare um, to prior years? Um, it's probably like a third of the donation that we got in past years. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think it's really good for a virtual ball. Um, oh. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be um, a different year because of those, those fundraising streams coming in. But the community has been so generous and donating funds um, that we've had a lot come in just directly to the department. Um, Cox Communication donated $25,000 um, in around May um, for COVID you know, food bank operations. Um, so that was wonderful. So, um, I mean, I think the community as a whole has come together and still has donated, whether it was through the marriage charity ball or through other ways, they still, and our donations just keep coming daily you know, shopping carts. I know, Eileen, your daughter, right, um, did a, a, 
a drive not too long ago in the neighborhood, collected a bunch right. of stuff. So we have, uh, that's phenomenal. We have youth and adults and um, community providers and businesses that do this, uh, that, are, that keep doing this. So our pantry is staying pretty stocked and we're, we're really happy about. Thank you. Um, and then, anything else, Kathy, did I miss? No, I think that covered it, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, so continued business, new items. I'm kind of going to lump those in together so we can just process through everything. Um, our first uh, business is now that we don't have Brian here, we need to elect a new chair. Um, that would be one of our main goals. Um, we definitely don't have to do that tonight unless anybody would like to volunteer. And we, we do have a forum so we can go. Um, but we can have time to think about it until our next meeting as well. Um, and with that being said, since Ryan is not on the board right um, no longer, we will need to try to fill his, his spot with a youth spot. So just to keep that in mind, okay? Does anybody want, was, was anybody interested in the spot of a chair? Or you guys want to, everybody want to give it some thought for our next meeting? Well, yeah. I, I think, you know, in the past, what we've done is we've looked to one of our high school members because it's a good experience for them. They learn how to run a meeting and we can kind of coach them in a, you know, a non-threatening environment. Um, so I guess still in what we're saying is we'd like you to think about it. Um, we're really yeah. pretty easy to get along with and it, it's just good practice. Okay. Well, training and how to run a meeting and what Robert's rules of orders are, Robert's rule of orders are. Okay. So think about it. All right, we can all run this meeting in our sleep. <laughs> okay. By the way, Robert's Rules is a book that you can read. Yeah. That it, helps. It, has, it, has it's, a it's it has a scintillating plot. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's the way of putting it. It's not very thick, I promise. Okay. Um, is that fair? Uh, sorry, what did you say? I said, feel free to think about it till our next meeting. Is that fair? And then maybe we, you can see if that's something that would work if you want it to be our chair. Okay. Yeah, that sounds okay. good. All right. And you can go to the library and you can borrow the book or ask <laughs> any one of us who has the book that's probably 100 years old. Just <laughs> the Robert's Rules is just a way of getting through a meeting so there's order and that every voice gets heard. It's kind yeah. of in the nutshell. That's what we should have given. Whenever we have a high school chair, we should give them a copy of Robert's Rules of Order. Oh, That's man. <laughs> what an idea. For another student, wouldn't it be helpful to get someone who's maybe either interested in, in a path that you think well aligns with the work of the Youth Advisory Board or maybe even is a underclassman so that then they could carry on and kind of continue on and Dylan, you could mentor them while they're, while they're learning. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if there's an organization that you could outreach to somebody like that or a club at the high school or maybe student council. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, feel free. Feel free to pass it along um, if somebody's interested. Um, they can we can always get them to like join our next meeting and they can kind of see what it what it looks like and what it entails and then um if they're interested we could they could always you know we can work to get them on the board i agree eileen um having um maybe like a freshman or a sophomore would be great um even an eighth grader um seventh eighth grader to kind of be able to stick with the board for a couple of years is, is a wonderful thing and it's really been great to see that in the past so just some options out there if anybody has any suggestions or would like to talk to any youth that they know and um, kind of mm -hmm. convince them to come check us out 
I'm going to mention it to my daughter, Riley, but I also don't want to make it like it always has to be one of our kids type of thing, you know? Just we can always teams. have more, more youth, too, though. I mean, we don't just right. have to have one position. Yeah. Right. Because I know she was going to come to the meeting um, before COVID, but, you know. Hmm. So. Then that happened. <laughs> yeah. We're much more fun in person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's tired of this FaceTime. I can hear her upstairs FaceTiming her friends, and I'm sure she'd rather be up there than be with <laughs> us. But um, I, I know she expressed an interest in it because that's just her personality. But I'll yeah, no, she has a great personality. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. We, I mean, she does have a great personality, um, and I agree. I think she, if she's interested. When we would love to love for her to give it a shot. Okay, I'll talk to her and I'll let you guys know. Great. But any other youth that anyone feels, you know, that would be interested, please, you know, send them our way or give them our information and we could always invite them to our next meeting so they could check it out. I, unfortunately, I think our next meeting will be virtual still, but we'll get there at some point, guys. <laughs> I think we're going to be um, virtual for a long time. Um, I have an emergency hearing that was scheduled for January 6th. Huh. January 6th? January 6th. 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 Does this still qualify as an emergency? Well, it, 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 was, it was an emergency ex parte custody that was denied, but they gave us a hearing date to fight about it for January uh, 6th. Doesn't seem very emergency time right. <laughs> timing. Yeah. Let's just say, um, we're, yeah. I agree with Barbara, we're going to be on this for a while. Try being at a hearing, listening to witnesses through Zoom. Definitely an experience, trying to assess mm. credibility. Yeah, I, I, I spent last Friday all day in my conference room with a client. We tried a case because I can social distance in my conference room if everybody's masked. And so it was just, yep. it's just, yeah. I'm only on my sixth tank of gas since March, though. <laughs> Yeah, they have a whole article about how much you save money working from home. Between so gas. If you haven't checked with your car insurance company, you should call them because if you really have a shortened commute, you could have a savings. Yeah. Well, I, I, I actually have an office that I can go to every day. So it's a mile away. So. But yeah, no, I think I think we're all uh, we all understand what we're looking at for a little while. So I appreciate everyone's understanding and flexibility. But I also think there's some positives to it. I mean, people who would normally not be able to, you know, leave their house because of child care reasons or any other reason now can just, you know, come in and not have to worry about that. And so we might get more, um, more people interested in coming to meetings. Um, I wanted to just give an update on some of uh, the grant work we've been doing as a coalition. Um, so we, I know it seems like so long ago, so Back in January, February, we applied for um, a grant that doesn't always come out. It's the Protect, um, my gosh, I'm blanking on the name right here. The Strategic Prevention Framework, yep. the Partnership for Success Grant um, that Bonnie said, you know, doesn't usually come out, but she thought, you know, we could definitely give it a shot. And we did not get that grant. We got word towards the end of July that we did not get that grant. Um, I did hear that other, there was a couple other um, municipalities, I believe, that put in for it in Connecticut, and they did not get it as well. Um, but the state of Connecticut applied for it, so we're all curious to know if they got it, because the goal was if the state of Connecticut got it, they were going to disseminate the funds mm -hmm. down through the regional mental health boards, which would make its way down to us, just not the same amount of money, obviously. But, so... You know, a little upsetting, but um, it was a good um, learning process for me. Um, I thought uh, it was definitely eye-opening. It was challenging. Bonnie was wonderful and um, was right on point with everything she did. Um, they said that they would be able to give us some pointers. Um, I think everybody who didn't pass the application, they'll, they're able to set something up in the near future to kind of just go over where maybe to strengthen some parts or what to look at in the future. So I look forward to that and that feedback.
We also applied for the Drug Free Communities Grant, which was due, it got postponed and it was due in the beginning of June. We still haven't heard back from that one. That was the one that we've been talking about for the last couple of years. Um, so we've got our fingers crossed still. I heard that we won't hear anything uh, before like mid to late October anyways, just because of everything. So a um, little bit of time, but we're keeping our fingers crossed and we're hoping that that all works out well. Um, I do, we did get word that we, we usually have um, a case act grant which is a prevention council grant that we've gotten for numerous mm -hmm. years. It came out in the middle of the summer and the town council, uh, I went to town council, they approved us applying for the grant. Since we're our local prevention council, we usually need to um, make a motion to apply for the grant through our group, our youth advisory board. Um, so what it is, is the local prevention council uh, grant that it can be used to um, for all different types of prevention efforts within the town. So we've used it to bring presenters in. Um, we've used it to supplement like the DARE program. We've used it in multiple different ways. Um, it's about 5300 and I think $42. So it's not huge, but it's a good chunk of money. Um, we are able to apply for it again this year. So if we wanted to make a motion as a prevention council to go ahead. I already wrote the grant and everything because it's one of the simple ones that come through. Um, we can go ahead and do that. I so move. I'll second. All right. Um, and thank you, and Ms. Then, Sarah. You're very welcome. Uh, we also applied for, uh, through the Youth Service Bureau on the JRB, our uh, DCF JRB grant that did that actually came out again, which we weren't sure because it's through the state of Connecticut um, DCF. Um, and we were able to apply for that and we were awarded. Um, so they gave us um, $8,500 to go towards our case management service for, um, for our juvenile review board and our CRB, which is our community resource board. So we've gotten that for the past five years also. So we just never know when this money is actually going to be available every year because it's all state money. So it's exciting when we see that it's going to happen again for this year. Um, so we apply for that one through youth services. And then our big youth service bureau grant from uh, the Department of Children and Families, um, we're also able to apply for that just recently came out. But they won't tell us how much funds we're going to get because they don't quite know given <laughs> the deficit. <laughs> so. We, get, we just have to put in and then we get what we get, kind of. But at least it's a good sign that they're letting us apply for it. Um, with the, with the, the um, case next. <laughs> it's a husky, right? <laughs> Who just had the dog? In the Somebody did, right? Pat. Pat, Pat, Pat had a beautiful, me. looks like a husky. Well, let's see I thought you wanted to go play with it. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. When we just when we just made a motion for the local prevention grant, Barbara, you made the you you guys I made, you the, made the first. I think and then who Maria, seconded? Uh, Maria, me, Maria seconded the motion, and you're going to oh, probably right. ask, have we voted on it? <laughs> oh, calling the question. Yeah. See, Ryan, you'll Dylan, you'll learn how to do this. <laughs> So call so the question for the vote. I'll approve, right? We all, yes, we all agree. Yep, yep, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Are we all yes? Yes. 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 Um, awesome. That's you it that I had on the, that's it that I had on the grants um, and also on um, just looking for a vacant youth member and just looking into someone who's interested for our chair position. Um, so all stuff we can kind of give some thought and hopefully in October we'll regroup and maybe can vote on some of those. Um, I didn't know if anybody else had any new items or um, continued business that we that you guys wanted to discuss. I know the school year is brand new. We don't really know kind of what we're allowed to do yet in terms of prevention programs. 
but it is a conversation that we definitely want to start having as soon as everyone's kind of in a, a groove, you know, after the month of September and things are maybe, you know, calm down and we, you know, things are going well. Well, one of the things that we're going to have to address at some point, it would be better if we started thinking about now than wait until the spring, is we're going to have to raise a thousand dollars. Now, mm -hmm. part of that is not very hard because it's three wills. We need to round up three wills. That'll give us nine hundred dollars. So, I don't know how we're ever going to get Eric to do his will, but so <laughs> scrounge up people. We can pray. It's, it's painless. It's painless for everyone but me. <laughs> I feel like we have to have. If we do something like that, we have to have some kind of like. Like I have, I something have put a, together. I have a flyer that I have a flyer from the last time we tried this. And and it can be informal. I mean, if you know somebody and and they come to me through the USERS advisory board, you know, we'll have the money. It beats basics. Okay. Well I'll maybe if, for the if any can the brochure can well, the flyer be placed somewhere with a library? Like a notice? I don't know. Well, let, let me let me find the flyer and let me circulate it, and maybe next month we can figure it out. But okay. it, it it I think a flyer. I think it needs more of a discussion than a flyer. I think people won't understand it as a fundraiser. I just think it needs more of like a verbal understanding of what we're doing because it is a weird fundraiser. So I'm not so sure people will take it seriously. You know, it just is very odd that if I ever saw a flyer saying that, I'm not so sure I would ever call the number. You know what I mean? It's just a weird thing. So I almost feel like maybe we need to video, videotape something and send it out or Barbara, have you present somewhere, like maybe to the police department or maybe to... Well, the police department are the victims I want to accuse because that, I suspect many of them do not have wills and they should. I mean, well, I've, you done know, this, I've done this before for a group and basically what the group did is they sort of rummaged around and said, look, you know, we have a lawyer who's willing to donate these wills and make this money for us. And so it was sort of a, just an informal network. But I actually have a contact at the police department that I talked to back in June and I have to follow up with him. It's He's not Eric now. President. <laughs> it's not Eric. Or maybe go, I have no idea, but like to PTO meetings. I mean, typically sure. the, I don't even know if they're doing PTO meetings any, you know, right now, but like typically the beginning of the school year is when you get the parents that are going to attend the PTO meetings. And then after that, it kind of dies off just typically through the years I've been involved. So I just think it needs a more of a presentation than a flyer in my no, personal No, opinion. I understand that, but it also means if, if, if between us we can round up three people, we'll be all set. I got Eric. <laughs> I'll round him. <laughs> God bless you. It's not like he doesn't need it. PTO meetings are all Zoom this year. Oh, they are? Okay. Until further notice. Well, maybe what we can do is once the PTOs are a little bit organized and there's a chairperson, I can make a personal contact. You know, if we decide to do this, I can make a contact with the chairperson. I mean, I can't do a lot of them, but I can certainly do the three or four that would fund the scholarship. And like I always say, it beats fake sales. Yes, it does. It's a little more, it's a gift that keeps on giving. It lasts, it's a little more. Yeah. User friendly for longer yeah, periods. You get something out of it. Yeah. yeah. It's not tasty, but it's important. <laughs> well, if we have nothing else, I move we adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Bye. Aye. We'll see you all next month. Hey. It's a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, and the Husky. Bye. Hold on. Bye. Bye. Hold on one second. Next meeting. Uh, Who made the first? Barbara. 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 I did. I moved. Oh, Eileen second. I'm good at the journey. And who's second? Eileen. 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 So 
sorry. I was trying to respond back and write stuff down that I missed that part. <laughs> Um, all right, and it's 7.56, so we can adjourn. And then our next meeting is going to take place the first Thursday in October, which is, just want to give you guys the heads up. Um, the first. Pull up my calendar. It's the first. Is that the first? Yep. Yeah. The first. Does that sound pretty good to everybody still? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. So um, you'll obviously see something come out for that. Um, and I think we're good. I appreciate everyone joining tonight. Thank you for your time. And um, hopefully everything stays smooth with the school. And we're back here in October with everyone healthy and safe. Take care. Thank yes. you. Hi. Welcome to Sarah. Again. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.